Hello Free Souls! Today I'm starting a new series on my channel and this one is going to be all about hormonal balance. So today is part one and it's going to be about estrogen dominance. So I'm going to talk about what estrogen dominance is, what it looks like, so what kind of symptoms to look out for, also what causes it and how to test it. So let's get started. Estrogen and progesterone are the two dominating hormones in a woman's body. So at different times of the cycle, progesterone and estrogen levels will kind of fall and go up and they will vary, but at all times, progesterone will be much more abundant in the body. So it will be hundreds of times of more progesterone than estrogen. Now, estrogen dominance is the elevated ratio between estrogen to progesterone. So there can be three scenarios. Estrogen can be too high with normal or low progesterone levels. Estrogen can be normal with low progesterone levels or both estrogen and progesterone can be low. It's just that progesterone has fallen more than estrogen. The important thing is that both hormones need to be at a certain ratio in order for you to feel and look good. Um, opinions differ, different scientists or doctors have slightly different numbers but it seems that it should be at least 200 and uh, ideally probably around 400 to 600 which basically means that you should have a few hundred times more progesterone than estrogen while if you're estrogen dominance then your ratio could look something like 25 to 1 or 95 to 1 or even 150 on 1 but basically anything under 200 would probably be causing symptoms. Now let's talk about the symptoms or the signs of estrogen dominance. So the first one, the, the most prominent one is all kinds of period issues. So heavy periods, a lot of clots in your periods, um, really bad period cramps, which by the way isn't normal at all. We should not have any period cramps at all and definitely not excruciating ones. Also mood swings, depression, foggy brain, um, water retention, bloating, hair loss, um, problem sleeping or insomnia, breast swelling and painful and very sensitive breasts, especially just before your periods, also fibro fibrocystic breasts, when you have cysts in your breasts, headaches especially during the PMS times, um, also weight gain or fat gain especially in your belly and around your hip area, thyroid dysfunction which is so closely linked to estrogen dominance and I talked about that in one of the most recent videos, I will link to it here and also fatigue, so estrogen dominance would lead to a lot of fatigue when you shouldn't even have to feel tired because you haven't done anything physically strenuous. And of course the dreaded PMS symptoms or in other words premenstrual syndrome when you feel horrible before your period starts. There are also certain medical um, disorders um, that are associated with estrogen dominance, so things like breast cancer, uterine cancer, um, cysts in your ovaries, in other words uh, PCOS, also premature aging in the body, allergies, autoimmune disorders, so if you have any of these, it could be that estrogen dominance is behind them. Hashimoto's, by the way, as well, could be caused by estrogen dominance, especially if you have anti-thyroglobulin antibodies, which is what I have. That is very, very closely linked to estrogen dominance. Now let's move on to the causes for estrogen dominance. So the number one cause, probably the most common one, is the use of birth control pills. A lot of women use it. The last time I looked at the stats, it was something like 30% of women in the developed world use them, which is insane. And I mean, birth control pills are so bad for your body. And if you want to know more about that, watch my previous video about the dangers of birth control pill. I explained it all there. But basically, they're awful for your body and they cause estrogen dominance big time because they provide you with estrogen, even more estrogen, and a lot of us already estrogen dominance because of a lot of different reasons I will talk about in this video but it also provides you with synthetic progesterone which is called progestin which is nothing like progesterone in your body and it just causes more and more estrogen dominance symptoms and low progesterone and they're just awful. Now the next cause is the use of hormonal replacement therapy for women going through menopause which again is kind of like using birth control pills but it's worse because it's usually at a higher dose and it, again, it contains the same synthetic hormones. It has the same side effects, just worse. And it's 
absolutely awful. Luckily, most doctors know better and don't prescribe this anymore that much. Thank God. The next cause is excessive stress, both mental and physical. And that is simply because when we are under stress, our body produces more stress hormones, especially cortisol. And in order to make cortisol, your body needs more progesterone. So it will be stealing that progesterone from your body in order to make more cortisol, which means that there will be no progesterone or less progesterone to oppose estrogen. And there will be more and more estrogen dominance. The next cause is premenopause, perimenopause and menopause itself. So from around early 30s, mid 30s, the production of progesterone starts slowing down little by little. But estrogen levels stay high up pretty much until the last period of a woman, which means that the estradiol or estrogen won't be opposed by progesterone, which is going to lead to more and more estrogen dominance. And unfortunately, a lot of women starts start experiencing estrogen dominance symptoms for the first time during that period. The next cause is an ovulatory cycles, which means that you haven't had ovulation in that particular month. And if you don't have ovulation, it means that progesterone is not produced. So there will be no progesterone to oppose estrogen. So there will be more and more estrogen dominance. The next cause is excess body fat. So scientists seem to think that anything over 28% is able to cause um, estrogen dominance because the fact is that fat is like an endocrine gland because it produces estrogen by itself. So if you, if you can find a way to lower that percentage of fat, you will lower estrogen levels. The next cause is the pollution in the environment that we live in. So I'm talking about xenoestrogens and things like plastics, um, pesticides, herbicides, all, all the chemicals in our skincare, body care, hair care, makeup, cleaning products, all of these act in the body as estrogens, like fake estrogens, and they can cause estrogen dominance. The next reason is a low quality diet. So a diet that is very low in fiber, with very little vegetables, very little fruit, with a lot of processed carbs, um, so basically a lot of white flour, a lot of sugar, and hardly any nutritious food. And the last reason for estrogen dominance is hypothyroidism or slow thyroid function. And that's because a slow thyroid function can lead to a sluggish liver. And liver is the organ that gets rid of excess estrogen. So if you can't do the job properly, the body is just going to build more and more and more estrogen. And uh, that's how estrogen dominance happens. So now the last part of this video, let's talk about how to test for estrogen dominance. So you need to check two of your hormones, estradiol and progesterone. Estradiol is one of the three types of estrogen. They're the one that women have the most of before menopause. And it's the most dangerous one, the most active one, the most potent one, the one is, that is able to cause breast cancer. And you can do either a blood test or a saliva test. Now, blood test is cheaper and it's available everywhere, so it might be more accessible to you. While a saliva test is more expensive and it might not be available in all the countries, so you might not be able to do that. But if you can do that, it's actually more accurate because, well, blood test shows all kinds of hormones floating in your blood, but not all of them are available for your body because some of them won't be absorbed or assimilated. So saliva will only show those that have been used, taken up by your cells. Once you get your results, you'll need to calculate the ratio between progesterone and estrogen. If you get a saliva test, it will be easy because both of them will be in the same measurements. But if you get a blood test, you will see that progesterone is in a different measurement from estrogen. So you will need to convert it to the same measurement as estradiol. And once you do that, you're just going to divide that by the number of estrogen and you get your ratio. Ideally, you should strive for close to 600. So maybe 400 to 600 would be optimal and anything under 200 could be already causing issues. I personally had 95, the ratio of 95 to one, the first time I tested it and I was feeling really, really bad at that time. I tested recently and now it's almost 150, which is much better. 
but it's not optimal yet, there's still room for improvement. So that's all for today's video, really hope that you found it interesting and helpful. In the next one, next Wednesday, I'm going to talk about how you can overcome estrogen dominance naturally. So stay tuned if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.